Welcome to the Working CEO Podcast, where we share real advice for busy business leaders. No business school BS, no sugarcoating, just straight talk about how to get work done. Who is the Working CEO? Why is he creating a podcast? And why should you tune in? Inquiring minds want to know. In this episode, we'll meet the Working CEO, Mark Porter, about his journey from beat cop to tech entrepreneur and now CEO of a publicly traded global enterprise. And more importantly, we'll chat about why he wants to share what he's learned with other entrepreneurs and working CEOs. Hi there, I'm your co-host, Susanna Song. And I have with me none other than the working CEO, Mark Porter, CEO of Highwire Networks. Hi, Mark. Hi, Susanna. Thank you. Well, burning question here. Tell us about your interest in this podcast. <laughs> well, you made it sound uh, so, so official and important on the intro. <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess uh, I've got, gotten uh, over the years, I've gotten to meet so many awesome people uh, through work and through um, other things that uh, work has afforded me the opportunities to, to do volunteer opportunities and charity things like that. So I, I just have been very fortunate to meet a lot of folks who I think have a lot to share. And the one thing about uh, all those people uh, who've helped me and, and, and hopefully uh, at some point I've been able to help them is that they, they're all, we're, we're, we're all interested in um, providing useful things for other entrepreneurs and for people who want to be entrepreneurs. And I think that's a huge uh, group of people out there who often try to figure out how to get started and never quite can. And, and um, so I just want to be able to bring people with a common background who've had some success. And in a lot of cases, like, like myself, uh, uh, experienced plenty of failure along the way and, and, mm -hmm. you know, give, give people some real advice on how to do it and share from all walks of life and, and uh, you know, see if we can't help some folks. Yeah. One thing I've, I've recognized over the years is CEOs and the rise to becoming a CEO. There are so many different journeys to get there. How did you get to your position and to your rise to the CEO position? Uh, well, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I guess it's a kind of a long story, probably ultimately because of my wife, uh, who was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, Why would she only date you <laughs> until you became a CEO? <laughs> she, uh, no, but she would not date me. Uh, she would not marry me uh, so long as I was a cop. So um, okay. maybe she saw some potential in me that I didn't quite see in myself. But uh, she was uh, she was adamant that that wasn't really a conducive lifestyle for her and and me. And uh, in the end, she was right. It, it, it actually. It was a long, strange trip from there where I, I went to law school for a little bit. I finished college, went to law school, uh, worked my way through some jobs in the telecom industry, and ultimately stumbled into what I thought might be a great idea in a better way and learned, um, learned a lot about the services business in telecom and morphed it from there. Mark, you mentioned that you were a police officer and, and, and your wife uh, didn't necessarily feel comfortable about it. Anything that you took away from that past life, I think it's very intriguing and very interesting that has influenced you as a CEO or, or your rise to the C-suite. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that you take from that experience. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a unique experience and it, it really doesn't matter where you're at in America, sleepy little town or big city. Um, you get to learn a lot about people. And, and I did learn a lot of lessons about it. Ironically, um, probably two, you know, really there, there's uh, two of the biggest lessons that I learned. Um, I took away, you know, my father actually shared with me the night before I left for the police academy. We, uh, we went to dinner and, and um, you know, he, he, he had done it for almost 30 years uh, in the town I grew up in. And, um, there was two, two things that really stuck out. And one he said was, you know, under stress and when it counts, always be honest. Um, and that seems easy, uh, enough. It's, it's not in that line of work. Cause sometimes the, 
things happen quickly and, and the truth gets very blurred and what you thought happened and what actually happened uh, uh, really sometimes get all muddled up in your head. Um, pressure has a way of doing that to you. Stress is an incredible uh, force. And the other one that, that I've carried forward even, even more important, and as the organization's grown, um, continues to be one that, that I think is super valuable, which is, he said, you, you know, no matter what happens, you're dealing with people at their worst moments, you're dealing mm -hmm. with horrible situations and, and uh, all that. But at the end of the day, you're still dealing with a person, no matter what, and, and never take away a person's dignity. And he told, wow. me, that, he told me then, yeah. and I didn't really understand it in the moment. He said, I wouldn't, I thought I did, uh, like, a, like a lot of 21 year old idiots. Um, I thought mm -hmm. I knew a lot of things, uh, and I thought I knew what I was getting into. And he said it would be harder than I, than I really thought it would. And he was right. And, and he went on to say, whenever you're, you know, releasing somebody or writing them a ticket or sending them off to jail, uh, try to get them to say thank you. And uh, believe it or not, uh, I think I succeeded at that uh, most of the time. Uh, I, uh, and um, it's, it's easy in business to lose perspective and to get frustrated. And as you have, you know, hundreds of employees and thousands of contractors, it's really easy to forget that at the end of the day, um, they are human and, um, dealing in humans on a good day is, uh, messy on a bad day. It's, it's downright maddening. So, um, I do, I try to, I think about that, that dinner a lot at the Omega restaurant, uh, and, uh, you know, try to keep that in mind. And I've shared that with a lot of, a lot of the people, um, uh, who, work for me and work with me. And, and, um, I, mean, I hope they generally do that too. Um, because it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just trying to get through the day some days. Yeah. Very good points, Mark. I was good. I was kind of chuckling when you're telling that story because I've only said thank you to a cop when they don't give me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think a lot of what you're saying is when you've got a position of authority and of power, there's still people out there who, who deserve respect, right? It doesn't matter if you're oh, a white yeah. collar, um, a person of power or blue collar. Uh, yeah, every, everybody deserves respect and it's easy when everything's going good. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, uh, I talk about this with customers. Um, you know, we have, we've had good fortune over the years of always having great customers. And, um, I talk about, you know, it, we're kind of selective in who we work with when we're doing service projects because we, we have to have some sort of cultural alignment and some sort of alignment around, along a common set of values. And, and that's really important because it's easy when everything goes right, mm -hmm. but it's not always going to go right, especially when you're in services businesses like the vast majority of ours are. And things are going to go wrong. So you sure as hell better like each other when it's going right, because you're going to need it when it goes wrong. And that's how you earn your stripes. And it's really that that lesson uh, really was when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're getting yelled at, which happens, you know, customers get upset. Um, how do you how do you handle that, especially with your subordinates? Uh, how do you handle that with those around you? And I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I, I certainly have um had my moments but that's why those around me who um have been around me the longest know um when i've when i'm raising my voice i'm just excited because i'm very passionate about a topic mm -hmm. when i'm when i'm not talking and i'm biting my lip or biting my tongue or stammering to get the words out um i'm trying very hard to make sure that that i don't break that rule and uh I think it's a good rule. I think, frankly, it's a good rule for any walk of life because uh, no matter what, there's still a person. What a lot of people don't know is you did not join Highwire as a CEO, but you've you've really worked your way up uh, and really <clears throat> helped uh, develop this current team. Now the the company has gone public. It's a public company. 
Tell us a little bit about that journey, Mark. Uh, I know there's a quote out there saying that success isn't really the measure of how far you've come, but essentially how you respond to failures and how you react to failures. So I'm sure that there, it hasn't been an easy road. Yeah, no, it definitely has not. Um, so I came in right, like right after the company uh, had started and, and what the company looks like today is nothing like what it looked like back then. In <laughs> fact, my, my, uh, my first, my first day, I remember sitting down at the, uh, in the back room of a, uh, corporate headquarters of a restaurant chain in Minneapolis of all places, downtown Minneapolis. And, uh, the, the table, uh, or, or I should say table, uh, air quotes for those of you <laughs> only listening was, uh, two saw horses and a sheet of, uh, plywood, not even, a not even sanded plywood. It was, uh, rough, rough plywood. And, uh, and Highwire is not a restaurant <laughs> no, <laughs> chain. No, no, that was, but that was our global headquarters at the time. <laughs> so um, it was, it was, it was a, 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 oh God, what did I get into moment? But um, it was a very, it was a very wild and chaotic journey, mm -hmm. like a lot of startups. Um, and, and it was relatively insane actually. But um, over a matter of the next, uh, I don't know, 12, 14 months, uh, myself and another gentleman ended up owning the company. And uh, the first, uh, you know, th that first moment, uh, when you talk about rough moments, was uh, I still remember at our at my old townhome laying in bed with my wife, and we were watching the news. Uh, and I said, uh, Hey, uh, we're gonna buy the company. And she said, What does that mean? And I said, We're gonna, we're gonna own the company. 50 50 and you know we'll we'll own it and she said what is you know what happens when the company doesn't have enough money for a paycheck and i said we won't get one uh, <laughs> and that um i probably knew deep down in my heart do whatever you want didn't really mean that in married parlance but um some people have accused me of being a little stubborn and hard-headed at times or just willingly uh, <laughs> willingly blind when it comes to listening to the good counsel of my of my lovely wife uh, <laughs> but that was the that was sort of that first moment where it got real and saying that out loud and knowing that that was the result uh potentially was interesting uh, how many years ago was that uh, that was about 21 years ago. So she's still here. We're still here. The company's still here. And, <laughs> she's uh, still here. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. Uh, she supported you through all we've of had, it. <laughs> we've had a lot of those, a, a lot more of those kind of moments along the way. It's definitely not been a straight line. It's been a, a challenge. I mean, we had... Um, this was all on the heels of kind of what they call the great telecom bubble in 2000. Um, there was a 2008... Uh, financial crisis, which was insane. In between there in 2006, we made the, uh, we we're number 134 on the Inc. 500 fastest growing. And by 2008, we were imploding under the weight of the financial crisis and three of our largest customers filing bankruptcy in 90 days. So lots of, lots of uh, stuff in between there. Yeah. Quite a journey. Anything you would tell the Mark Porter 20 years ago, you had the foresight to know that one day you would own the company, but anything that you, I don't want to use the word regret, but something that you would want to tell a younger, uh, maybe not as refined a uh, Mark Porter to help maybe save uh, some pain, some heartache, some stress. Oh, uh, yeah. So first of all, um, that infers that I'm somehow more refined today. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's a big leap. I, I like to, I like to think I am. I'm definitely older, got a few more, a few gray hairs along the way. Um, you know, Susanna, there's a lot that I would tell myself, uh, to do differently along the way. Um, and just like in, uh, just like thankfully from my early experience in police work, there's a couple of times when I maybe didn't heed those words that my dad told me. By the way, he doesn't know I tell people this story. It, it'd be, he would probably be shocked and he doesn't know what a podcast is. So if I, hear, 
but <laughs> one day, one day, maybe I'll tell them. Um, there, but like the times that I didn't heed those, I was very fortunate that I always got uh, years later, somehow the universe kind of circled back and let me know uh, that, that those stories, there's, there's two times in particular, and they both turned out really positive in that individual's life. They turned out to be life-saving. In fact, I, I just frankly got a, a, a message on Facebook from one of the very first people I ever arrested about how it changed his life forever for the better, um, which is weird because I had been thinking about him nonstop for, for weeks and thinking about how I, you know, I was just doing my job, but those, those things have such a profound impact on people's life. So when I look back now, uh, lots of things I would tell myself, number one, um, shut up and listen. You don't know everything. In fact, you probably know next to nothing. Um, and I try to, uh, you know, surround myself with people who, who can help me be better. I've always, I've always had good fortune and the people have helped me for whatever reason, but, um, I think, you know, shut up and listen now having a, two teenagers, uh, a, a 17 year old son, uh, uh, you know, it's hard for me. I, I understand why he doesn't do either of those things when I'm giving him advice. Um, because I wasn't doing them, you know, youth is definitely wasted on the young, but there's so many more. And I hope that over, over the series, um, there's so many more granular lessons, um, that I hope that over the course of this series with some of the people that we're going to bring on that we'll get to those because, um, we get, I, I get a lot of questions and I know I get the opportunity to help people one-on-one -on -one a lot. And I get the opportunity, as you know, uh, you know, I volunteer with the Batavia high school incubator here in the town where we're headquartered, teaching the next generation, how to start a business. And I love that. And you get to participate that. And so do some of the other people at the office and that's, um, uh, incredibly fulfilling, but, um, I hope that through the, through the series, we get to do that even more. Well, I'm excited about this podcast and to, to be your sidekick, uh, if you will, because this is, I've learned so much from you, Mark, and, uh, you are quite, uh, the mentor and, uh, you have lots of great stories, lots of humor. So I really think that this uh, podcast will be beneficial. It'll be lighthearted. It'll be fun. Uh, so thank you for, for our listeners for joining us. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we'll always have a video for you to see as well. And if you have feedback or questions about today's podcast, please contact us at podcast at highwirenetworks.com or just leave, uh, leave a comment below there. And be sure to join us for our premiere episode of The Working CEO, The End of Jobs with our special guest, Jeff Wald, founder of Work Market. Until next time, I'm Susanna Song. And I'm Mark Porter. And this is The Working CEO. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of The Working CEO. Remember, whether your collar is blue or white, roll up your sleeves and let's get real. The Working CEO is made possible by Highwire Networks, a leading global provider of technical, professional, electrical, and managed cybersecurity services serving businesses in more than 180 countries. To learn more, visit highwirenetworks.com.